it's made has been, for example, rather than coming to cash to close, and yes, let's say you're gonna bring, you're gonna, you're gonna have a check for $5,000 in return from your, from your existing bank on a refinance, and let's say you have $5,000 from them and you need to bring a thousand cash to close, the other result could be if somebody, if, if everything went as smooth as it needs to go, instead of you bringing the thousand dollars to close could be the $5,000 that you get back from your existing bank without having to bring your thousand dollars to close. So really now you're just gonna have that $5,000 clean rather than having that $5,000 take a thousand off to cover the cash that you had to bring to close. I have no issue with bringing cash to close if you're prepared for it. I had a client the other day that said, I want my new mortgage as low as possible. I'm prepared to bring $5,000 to closing to pay for the closing costs and the escrow. They told me that. So we structure the loan accordingly. Where I have the problem is when they tell you you don't need any money and then it's you need thousands of dollars or they tell you you need $1,000 and then you need $4,000. You know, these are the problems that I'm talking about. Um, and it's not a matter of like, if they're going to come up, it's a matter of when are they telling you, telling you the day before the closing or a week before the closing is too late. They should be telling you the earlier they can tell you the better. And the seasoned mortgage professionals that I know and work with all over the country, when there's a problem, they're getting on the phone with the client, with the title company, with all the people right away. Let's tackle the problem. Like don't hide it. Don't kick it under the rug. It only gets worse the longer you let it sit. So you know, a seasoned mortgage pro is going to take responsibility. Even if it's not their fault, they're going to see where the issue is. They're going to come up with solutions. They're going to communicate with everybody on the solutions so that it can be rectified. Getting that couple thousand dollars back from your escrow is great, but that's not special. Everybody gets that. Everybody that refinances that has a balance in their escrow gets that. And I, I have actually some videos where I talk about escrow refunds. That's normal. That's a great reason to refinance. But if all of a sudden you had to spend 5,000 to get 5,000, 5,000 out of your bank account to get 5,000 in 30 days back in your bank account, there's no benefit. That's a net zero proposition. Yeah, you save money on your interest and that's great. I mean, there is a return on investment, but again, you weren't prepared up front. Now that 5,000 that could have gone to paying down your debt, it could have gone to your emergency fund. It could have gone to you know, all these other areas, maybe it could have gone into an investment account or to put down on another property. Now that money's gone because your loan officer didn't take care of what they were supposed to. Now it's gone because they didn't come up with a solution to help you. They simply put all the responsibility back on you. I'm just saying that's not right. Okay. I've been there. I've had it happen. Nobody's immune. If you've been doing mortgages for a, a good period of time, everybody's got stories and problems that come up. Luckily, 95% of mine were in the first couple years that I did this, and now I've learned. And I actually have a notebook that I keep by my desk where any time that I have a problem on a loan, I don't care what type of problem that it is, I write down the date, the name of the client, and the problem that was occurred, and then I write down how I solved the problem. Okay, and I go back to that notebook a couple times a month, and I just open it and I just read the entire thing, you know? you're literally talking about maybe one transaction every couple of months. Maybe it's a minor detail. Maybe it's a major detail, but the bottom line is learn from your mistakes. Work with a lender that's going to take that responsibility and step up. When it comes time, okay, and, and the rubber meets the road, is your lender going to step up, take money out of their commission, be the quarterback, get the rest of the team on board, okay? I've had transactions where the lender takes a hit, the realtor takes a hit, the title company takes a hit, everybody takes a hit so that that person can buy that house, okay? Because that's what it's all about. Is that the team you want to be on? Oh, your interest rate was a quarter percent higher than the other guy your, you know, your brother's nephew's niece got a mortgage from like five months ago? Who cares? You got your house, you had the best team, you didn't have to come up with money, and at the, the, the bottom of the ninth inning, so to speak, your team stepped up and got you to the finish line and won that game. That's what it's about, okay? It's not about the lowest rate. It's about the best loan, the best transaction, the least stress.
that's what I really want to emphasize to everyone because I've been on both sides. I've seen both sides. I've had clients call me crying the day before closing because their lender tells them that they have to come up with all this money and they can't. Okay, if they would have worked with that winning team up front and not just focused on what's the lowest rate or who's, you know, who's got the best sounding voice on the phone, who's the best salesman, then maybe they wouldn't have had all the extra stress. And 10 out of 10 times, Sophia, I will tell you, if you ask those people that have the nightmare stories, if they do it again, they every time would tell you, I'd rather have had a better team working with me and taken a higher rate than gotten the lowest rate. And now I didn't even close. Now I don't even have the house. Okay. And that's a story that brings me back. The last one I'll tell here is a client that I started working with last November, November, 2019. They found me on Google because I'm one of the top rated lenders on Google with my reviews. So they called me and said, Hey, I found you online. I know you're one of the top guys in the area. I want to work with you on buying a house. I got them pre-approved. Everything was great. They, they actually were already living in the house they wanted to buy as a renter and they were buying it from the landlord. They had been living there a few years. It was their dream home. Well, I pre-approved them and about two weeks later, I never heard from them. Like they completely ghosted me. I never heard from them. They wouldn't respond to emails, nothing. That was in November of 2019, okay? In March, I'm sorry, in February of 2020, they finally called me back. I just figured they weren't buying the house anymore. I had no idea. They called me in February of 2020, about four months after, and they said, Rob, you were right. We went with this uh, mortgage company we found on the internet. Uh, we were working with this loan officer, and they promised us the world. And now we, it's been four months, and we still haven't closed on our house. Four months. We've had two appraisals done. We've had an at-home inspection. We've spent over $1,500, and now they're telling us they can't even close the loan for us. You know, so I'm back to you. And I asked them what happened and they gave me this story. And I said, okay, I was able to identify the reason the lender couldn't close the loan. It was a problem with the debt to income ratio. Again, they were approved for the wrong type of loan. I went and approved them for an FHA loan, which had the more, the better requirement, the easier requirement on the debt to income ratio. And we were able within 30 days to have them start to finish close simply because they came back, put their tail between their legs, they got qualified for the right mortgage that second time, and in less than 30 days, start to finish, we closed them. They wrote me a very long letter, it's on my Google page, you know, about all this, and really just taking the story that I just told you and put it in their words, and now they just sent me a note the other day to me and the title company that did their closing, and they said, you know, thank you so much for what you've done. My family now with the pandemic, we've been inside, we're so excited that we have this house. It's our dream home. We've been able to make it our own. They did some home improvements. They did, uh, you know, some painting. They really made it their own house, and they're so fortunate. They have two young, uh, young children that are twins, and now they can grow up here. It's in a great school district. It's everything they wanted. They didn't give up. What state was that? That was in Connecticut. So um, that client was in Connecticut here. So it was like, you know, that just came full circle because they've been in the house now for like four months uh, since they closed. And obviously the pandemic happened and they were stuck inside and they were just so happy because their landlord was about to kick them out. Their landlord was about to, if they didn't close by the end of March, they were going to be kicked out of the house and be basically homeless or have to get a small apartment. Obviously it was the pandemic. It wasn't easy, but because of the way we took care of it and getting them to the closing table, it got done right. They got in the house and that's all set. So that's just, you know, that's taking it full circle. That's a real world example about why who you work with matters and, uh, you know, the whole team matters. So I hope it helps. I hope everyone watching this gets value. I hope you can now see and take this beyond just a transaction and see that it's a relationship. You know, I've had clients I've worked with on four, five, six different refinances over the years or different mortgages, buying a home, refinancing, selling, this, that. They come back to me time and time again for that relationship. That's what it's about. Get the relationship. Don't switch lenders every time. Find somebody you can work with. Find somebody that's got the experience and credibility that you trust and then latch on to them and let them be your advisor. Let them, you know, steer the ship on the transaction and be that quarterback that we were talking about. Thank you, Rob.